Shalom, shalom. Let the real Hebrew Israelites come a day in and day out to prophesy the down for all the Babylon the Great, which is America. First off and foremost, our praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh, Bashem, El Shai, Bashem, Makar Kadash, double honors to the other apostles of Great Millstone. Salutations to the elect, Lord, you may be. <laughs> Brother Shapaya, coming from GMS Chicago, coming at you again with a quick lesson through the Spirit. Um, excuse me, I just woke up. Well, the reason why I woke up is had a, a heavy vision. And it's really about spiritual powers. Um, it's crazy because um, I didn't think it was a vision. You know, I thought it was a regular, regular dream. And I wasn't gonna speak about it, but you know, when I woke up, the Lord told me to speak about it because of what happened at the end of the dream. All right, so basically in the dream, my father passed away. And this this happened in real life. My pops passed away a couple of, a couple of years ago, 2015, I believe. Um, and this is the father who adopted me. He was born in 1934. And uh, he passed away, I believe he was 81. Well, he would have been 81. He was 80 or 81. He passed away in 2015. Um, and this is this this wasn't my biological father. This is the man who adopted me when I was five, six years old. Taught me how to work. I was laying, you know, you asked the brothers, I've been working since five years old. Laying bricks, cutting grass, washing windows. You know, manual labor. You know, I had old school pops. You know, and I thank the most high for that. Uh, he had 10 kids of his own and adopted nine more. So anyway, he he was dead in the dream. For some reason, you know, we was having a funeral or something. Then also, you know, brothers that know my story, my son passed away that I had. Um, he would have been my middle child, but, you know, he passed away at birth. So, so apparently we was having a funeral for both of them. So... In this dream, I, you know, I had my little side business. You know, I was selling food and stuff. And I guess, you know, I stayed in Chicago. I guess it, this guy, he thought I was selling drugs on his block. But I was talking about, let's say I had white cake or white cookies or something. You know, I was selling bakery goods, and I guess he thought I had cocaine. And the nigga shot me. And he shot me the fuck up. And I looked down, and I looked up, and it didn't affect me. I, like, I felt like I spit the bullets right out, because I got hit in the chest. So I <clears throat> spit the bullets right out. And he looked at me, and he had fear. Like a great fear came upon him. So I grabbed his gun, and I grabbed his kids. And I was just I was about to kill his kids, and then kill him. But you know what? I said, hey, this judgment is for your father. So I slaughtered this man. And you know, when I well, when I figured out, like, damn, I didn't die. I knew the Lord gave me the spiritual powers. I knew Yahweh Shai. I knew Yahweh Bashim El Shai was with me. So I, you know, I killed him. I slaughtered him. And I said, damn, I need to make it to my, my father's funeral, right? So um, I go to my father's funeral. You know, now in the dream, I'm crying because, you know, that, that man meant a lot to me. And uh, my son was there too. They, they were both in their caskets. Now, mind you, everybody in my family already went to the funeral. So I was the last person to get there. So everybody's downstairs eating. Like, all the brothers from GMI Chicago, the, both sides of my family. You know, and it's ironic, it was my father because... And I don't mean to jump around. My real biological father, I, I've never met. Matter of fact, I just met my real biological father on Tuesday. You know, was at his funeral, and he was born in 1944, and he was uh, he was a big time drug dealer um, of the Stones. All right. So, uh, but that ain't the father that was in the dream. It was just ironic that that's how it happened. But um. Uh, I go to the casket 
and I just get on my knees and I pray to the Lord. And I, I, it's like I covered, and I held my son like this. And I prayed to the Lord to bring him back, and instantly. And you know, you know how you look at a, a dead body in the casket and they embalm you. You know, your, your skin look all dry and tough. That's how my son's skin looked. You know, and instantly he started <gasps> breathing. So I'm like, oh, shit. And then right after that, because I prayed, I prayed over both of them. My father wakes up, just gets straight out the casket, all that. So now I'm astounded. I'm crying. I'm, you know, call along me how about Shemel Shai. Call along me how about Shemel Shai. So the brothers see it, my family see it, everybody's like, wow. So we, you know, do a big celebration. It felt like Lazarus, you know, like when Lazarus woke back up. You know, we had the food going. <coughs> you had the food going and everything like that. And, um, you know, I'm trying to tell Elder Malcolm and Elder Uriah, Hey, listen, something's happening because I didn't tell him what happened earlier. And before I could tell him, and I had it was a commotion outside, some guys were shooting. So in the midst of that, I get shot in the head, brothers. I feel the hole in my head. I said, damn, I'm probably about to drop dead. But the spirit of the Lord wouldn't allow me to drop dead. I said, damn, the Lord gave me spiritual powers. You know, I just prayed over, you know, my father and son. They came back to life. Got shot multiple times in this vision, or this dream, if you will. And I said, damn, because I was walking in the alley. I was trying to figure out what was going on. And a stray bullet came and hit me. And it had no effect on me. So I'm like, oh, shit, I got to go tell the brothers. Like, we, we living in the time of uh, spiritual powers. So I go back, uh, go back in the house, and we eating. And um, I was a brother talking to my my father on the phone, you know. Uh, I don't, uh, cause it was, all, all this apparently happened on Shabbat, you know. And so basically, the brother on the phone was telling him, "Hey, what you got to do on Shabbat? The day at rest and all that." So when the, uh, the elders finally let me speak, Elder Malcolm, he said, "Brother, we got to find out what's going on with you. What's going on with you?" And I was um, on what I was about to tell him because I didn't get the chance to tell tell him. The spirit woke me up, and that's why I'm saying it now <laughs> because this is what I had to say, what I was going to say in the dream because the Lord already had the thought in my head. I would say, brothers, my father died, my son died, I got shot, and through the spirit of power of the Lord, the Lord uh, allowed me to bring him back, and uh, He allowed me to survive. You know two uh, shootings. And what I was about to tell them is, brothers, we living in the time of prophecy. We living in the time of the miracles. Basically, pretty much. Pretty much. Because before I was able to say this, I'm telling you, the whole camp of GMS was uh, for the most part. And I had both sides of my families. My adopted family and my biological family. And it's like everybody was following me, you know? Listening, believing, and uh, we was at this, we was at this big grand table. It was food everywhere, you know. And what it looked like was about to start happening outside was a great chaos because niggas was just shooting. It, it was crazy. Police was running down the street, all types of shit. And it looked like shit, regular hood shit, like niggas just getting into it and shooting it. But the shooting the shit, the shit was wild. But I remember the, the look on Elder Malcolm's face. He's like, brother, we need, some, we need to know what's going on with you. Let us know what's going on, you know, as far as, you know, what happened. Like, you know, how did any of all this happen? And that's exactly what I was about to say. The miracles of the Lord is here. The Lord is about to start giving us spiritual powers, all right? And we, we about to start working miracles. And, you know, when I woke up, <clears throat> I, I wasn't going to tell this this little vision, you know, because I really didn't think it was that heavy until the, you know, the Lord said it. He said, that's why he wasn't able to finish tell, telling the brothers what you want to tell them, because 
You were supposed to do it right now on camera. <laughs> so it, it, was a, it was funny how that worked out because I wanted to say what I was saying now in the dream. But the Lord, he woke me right up and said, go do a video. You know, you know was, I, I don't have heavier visions and I don't want to call it a light vision, but I, I truly believe we, we, we're getting in those times, man, where the Lord is, hey, Peter, hey, they rose the dead. Elijah, all right, there, there are stories about it, you know. There's stories about it, man. Um, shit. Like Paul got bit by a poisonous snake, didn't die. That's how I felt with the bullets, man. I just, did. I couldn't die. And throughout this whole vision, I knew the spirit of the Lord was with me. Like, I had no doubt about it. And when I, it's like, that's all I play. I said, call on me. How about your mouth shot? Call on me. How about your mouth shot? You know? Hey, so with that, hey, I pray that was somewhat edifying. I literally just woke up. It's like 7 o'clock over here in Chicago. Um, excuse me. <laughs> Stuffy. Just woke up. Um, the Lord is bringing us into those times, brothers. I truly believe that this year more than ever, our salvation is near more than ever. Because even before Yahusha came back, you know, in this dream, the Lord, hey, we had food. We had nothing to worry about. Um, we had spiritual powers. And, and this this was before Yahweh Shai cracked the clouds, man. You know? So with that, I'm going to say all praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Makar Kadash, double honors to the other apostles of great millstone, and salutations to the elect, whoever you may be. Abba, Abba, Abba.